Hello everyone, this is your Lekala Master Ruharagopal. In this video, we will discuss most famous and important problem from real numbers chapter of 10th class that is proving root 3 or root 5 or root 7 or root 2 irrational. So everybody used to say that this is the most expected question for any board exam and uh, without wasting time let me come back for the proof of this one and uh, most of the times we get this question not exactly as root 3 sometimes you may get 1 by root 3 sometimes you may get uh, 2 plus root 3 sometimes you may get uh, like uh, root 2 plus root 3 so whatever it may be the question just uh, the main intention is uh, proving the so and so part as an irrational thing so that is what we are supposed to prove that one now before going to the proof of this one we are supposed to recall the most important and simple point here so let me explain that first and later we'll go for the proof of this one so now just uh, let me take uh, some counter example for example take a uh, 3 which is a prime number i'm taking some perfect square like 36 so now can i say 3 divides 36 so or 36 is divisible by 3 so if 3 divides 36 definitely my claim is 3 divides square root of 36 that is nothing but 6 also so if 3 divides 36 3 divides 6 also where 6 is the square root of 36 and let me take some other counter example like um, take 7 7 is also a prime number and taking a perfect square 196 so if 196 is divisible by 7 then the square root of 196 which is nothing but 14 is also divisible by 7 so here my claim or the statement is if any prime number divides a perfect square then it divides the square root of that square also so in a technical way let p is any prime number which divides a square then p divides a also most important thing what we are going to use in the proof of this uh, proving irrational so now coming to this one so here a little differently we are going to approach this problem we used to call it as a contradict method so as they are asking to prove root 3 is an irrational here we are starting the problem assuming the root 3 as a rational number. So here somehow we can manage to show that our assumption is wrong. So obviously it is going to be irrational number. So now let me start. So let us assume that root 3 is a rational number. So now we know that every rational number can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers as well as q not equals to 0. Here also I am taking the same thing. So can I write root 3 is equals to p by q? So inside the bracket, I am taking or I am considering P and Q as a co-prime. This is the most important thing and used to say that the heart of the entire problem. So P comma Q are co-primes as well as Q not equals to zero. That whatever the information I am mentioning inside the bracket is the most important one. So now we assumed root 3 as a rational number and as it is a rational number, root 3 can be expressed in the form of P by Q. Here we are taking P and Q or as co-primes. Now, as square root is there to remove that square root I'm doing squaring on both sides so let me write that one sops or squaring on both sides we are going to get 3 is equal to p square by q square so now if I transpose q square to that side we are going to get 3 q square is equal to p square here let me say something and first of all let me take it as something 1 so now if you take com some counter example like 12 12 is equals to 3 into something we can write of course we know that it is 3 into 4 but 12 is equals to 3 into something I am writing here can I say 12 is divisible by 3 why because 12 can be written as 3 into something so here as this is possible now here also as we got p square is equals to 3 into q square we can say p square is divisible by 3 that is only I am writing here so p square is divisible by 3 which implies p also divisible by 3 am i right so just now we discussed if any prime number divides a perfect square it divides its square root also so same thing i mentioned here so here p is divisible by 3 if p is divisible by 3 so we can write let p is equals to 3 into something i'm taking as something k p is equals to 3k in the equation one as we got p square here so let me do sops here so we are going to get p square is equals to 9k square so now I am substituting this 9k square is equals to p square in equation 1 just replacing p square with 9k square what we are going to get on replacing this one we are going to get 3q square is equals to 9k square if you simplify we are going to get 3k square is equals to q square 
which is nothing but again q square is also divisible by 3 when q square is divisible by 3 as we mentioned q also divisible by 3 so here if you observe this entire process we got somewhere p is divisible by 3 and we got somewhere q is divisible by 3 so here in the very second step we mentioned both p and q are co-primes what do you mean by co-primes co-primes are nothing but which doesn't have any common factor other than one but here if you see both p and q are divisible by 3 that is nothing but p comma q are not co-primes that is only i'm writing here p comma q are not co-primes so therefore our assumption is wrong which means that what we assumed we assumed root 3 as a rational number here we are proving that our assumption is wrong therefore root 3 is going to be irrational number that is only what i am mentioning there one so if you observe carefully this entire process is a so simple one but in systematically we are supposed to prove that one so if you observe this one this is the main part even you can use in other type of problems uh, i mean for example if the question is given something like that 1 by root 3 prove that 1 by root 3 rational so simply what you can show prove that entire root 3 as a rational number just uh, you can add a simple conclusion reciprocal of any irrational is also irrational therefore 1 by root 3 is also irrational you can mention suppose if the question is given something like that 2 plus root 3 you can show the entire process you can add a conclusion sum of a rational and irrational is always irrational suppose if it is given 2 into root 3 2 into root 3 then also you can prove the same thing you can write a product of a non-zero rational and irrational is always irrational Suppose if the question is given root 2 plus root 3, then you can choose any one of these two, either root 2 or root 3. Suppose root 3 already I proved, you can write, similarly we can prove root 2 is also irrational. And final conclusion, sum of two non-conjugate irrationals is always irrational. If you are able to remember all these conclusions, you can follow the same procedure for any type of all these problems either root 3 or 1 by root 3 2 plus root 3 2 into root 3 root 2 plus root 3 for all these five different type of problems you can follow the same procedure and you know that it's the most important problem for any board exam so hope you understood this one we'll meet in the next video with another topic until then take care bye bye your slack color master <laughs>